Lord Jesus, girl. Girl, Bishop Jake's daughter, Cora Jake's getting a divorce. Does that mean she married the wrong man? If the bishop's daughter is getting a divorce, what that mean for the rest of us? Lord, what we going to do? Honey, this is all the discussion that's going on in the church girls group and in the Christian wife groups, wives groups, and all the church people groups. If the bishop's daughter is getting a divorce, what does that mean for the rest of us, especially those girls who don't have fathers in their lives to direct them and show them the way? We're going to talk about that this morning for a few, few, few minutes. I want to thank you, thank you, thank you for your love and your support. Thank you for those comments. I'm going to get to those comments. Be sure to subscribe and thumbs up. Now, I see I have two groups of people in the comments about the three groups, Bishop Jakes, okay? One group agree wholeheartedly with me. Then the other two is questioning. One lady, she left about 50 question mark. Where in the Bible does it say the generation is weaker? You need to go study it, baby, and take your 55 question marks and go study that thing. <laughs> okay, wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. Wisdom tells you, okay, this was at least what I learned in, in, by, in uh, ministerial training. If somebody says something in the Bible, you don't know what where it is, what it is, you need to go study it. Google, honey, Google is your friend. But yes, the Bible does talk about how each generation is weaker. They grow wiser, but they're weaker right? My little boy at six, seven, the words he's using. He said something the other day. Um, oh, mommy, I don't feel confident with my, he had spelling test. We was reviewing his phone. He said, oh, mommy, I, I just don't feel confident. Confident? Lexi wasn't using no con word. Talk about she don't feel no confident at no six years old. Okay. So it's in there. Go study, 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 study. And then I have another group, shout out to all my church cousin. I can tell y'all went to Sunday school. See, I can tell the ones that went to Sunday school and Bible studies, okay? I have to get my new Sunday school book. About what I said about Bishop Jakes, that Cora, she got that stuff on her. Hallelujah. She's got that oil on her. Shout out to my church cousins. Mantle, mantle, mantle. Catch it, catch it, catch it, okay? Don't tell them what we're talking about. Let them go watch the video and catch it, catch it, catch it. But like I say, you know, Cora, that she got that good stuff on her, okay? She has that noise. You know what Cora remind me of? Always remember. Remember this story in 2 Samuel 18, I think, with Joab and Absalom, right? When, when Absalom came up against King David and Joab, uh, Joab killed him, okay? Now, you know, I always liked Joab because Joab was the no-nonsense type of man. Anybody that threatened David's kingdom or the kingdom of Israel, Joab would kill him, okay? Love him. I love him. I love him. And so when they got Joab, they, uh, uh, they got Absalom, Joab called the Cushite. How many of y'all knew what a Cushite was? Cushite is a black man, Negro Cushite, okay? Joab called the Cushite and said, come, run to King David. He was going to make him the messenger, right? And, and Joab told the Cushite, say these words to the king. Here come... Ooh, excuse me, what's his name? Ahimamaz. But anyway, Z Zadok's son. Zadok was a priest. So here comes the priest's son saying to, to Joab, Joab, let me run to the king. Joab said, well, what? run to the king? You ain't got no news. He said, I know, I know, I know, but let me run to the king. <clears throat> Joab said, okay, run to the king. So Zadok, Zadok's son outran the Cushite. They didn't give him a name. Cushite I mean you need to study, okay? Joab, Zadok's son, I forgot what his name was, outran the Cushite. 
And so when the messenger watching from the tower saw Z Zadok's son running, they said, oh, he's the priest's son. He's got good news. So David is sitting down there relaxing and waiting for the good news to come. Well, when Zadok's son come, uh, uh, he said, all is well, my king. And King David said, well, what about my son, Absalom? Because David loved Absalom more than he loved any of his sons initially because Absalom was supposed to be the next king of Israel, but he couldn't wait his turn, right? So King David said to Zadok's son, well, what about my son? He said, I, I don't know. I, you know, there was a commotion, but when I got there, you know, I don't know what happened. See, he don't have that stuff on him. So then here comes the Kushite. So then the messenger said, wait a minute. There's another man running. First they said, there's, there's a man running, looks like Zadok, this priest's son. Then they said, there's another man running. So King David said to Zadok, the, Zadok's son, okay, stand here for a while. There's another messenger coming. And when the messenger coming, the Kushite, the Kushite said, I bring you good news, king. And King David says to the Cushite, what about my son Absalom? And the Cushite bowed before the king. And he said, may all the enemies of, is of, of King David be like your son. And the, the Bible says, David, David heart broke. And he went up and he cried for his son Absalom because he loved him. He cried like a baby. And then Joab had to come and check him. Uh, you know, would you prefer for all of Israel to be dead? But 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 Absalom, Absalom lived. See, they, they Joab did what what he needs to do. But my point with Cora, she got the message. Come on, somebody. Cora has that anointing on her mantle, mantle, mantle. Catch it, catch it, catch it. All right, that's what my church is. I had to give y'all a today, today, Wednesday. You know, we're not going to Bible study tonight. I got to give you a little Bible study tonight. Okay, so there's a lot of people getting a divorce. That Devon Franklin, he started this divorce. I mean, the month of January hasn't been out, been gone yet. And we've talked about about 10 divorces, right? About 10 couples getting a divorce, some. You expected some, you didn't expect. Now we come down to Bishop Jake's daughter and I'm reading the comments in the groups and I'm listening to other people. And uh, apparently people was not happy with the choice she made for her husband. This per perhaps, this they said this young man is a rapper. He trying to be a rapper or something. But one of the things they pointed out is that they've been together for a very long time since high school. So that's why I don't believe in boyfriends. I don't do boyfriends because if you've been together with this man since high school and through college, you, you expect the next step is to get married. But what about if this man is not for you to marry? This is why I don't believe in boyfriends saddling your lives down with this one man throughout high school, throughout college, and now you automatically think the next step is to get married when that man might not be right for you. Yes, that works. it worked 85 years ago with our grandparents. And we know they stayed together, not because they loved each other, because it was frowned upon for them to leave. So not because y'all been together forever, mean y'all supposed to get married. And that's a mistake a lot of people make. We were in college, we're college sweethearts. So now the natural step means you're supposed to get married. But what if this person is not right for you, right? What if what if you you have different um, foundational goals, foundation found foundational structure than he does? And see what happened is a lot of couples they force themselves to get to, to be together. See when you grow, you either gonna grow together. Are you going to grow apart and grow separately? Most couples grow separately. How do we know that? Most marriages do not, first marriages do not last. Most first marriages end in divorce. Second marriages, I think it's 75% 70, ends in divorce. That's why I waited to get married. 
I am one of those people who think it's better to stay by yourself than to marry the wolf in sheep's clothing and make a mess of your life. So even though y'all were in high school, lovers, boyfriends, and girlfriends, and in college, it doesn't mean you're supposed to get married. In my book, in my book, 10 Years a Girlfriend, be sure to pick that up if you haven't. I talk about the girls that's been waiting 10 years, 15 years, 20 years for him to marry you because you think he's the one. But what if he's not it? In my book, 23 Types of Guys You Might Meet, I talk about, do you have a list of things you desire in your husband? So how do you know for sure that your high school sweetheart, your college boyfriend has those things? But what a, what a lot of people do is you think you're supposed to get married, right? So even though if he don't match up with what you really want, you still going to go ahead and marry him because you've been together for so long. And so what happened for me is as I dated, I learned more and more of what I wanted and what I liked. So the first thing for me was he must be born again. I am a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. I am born again. I love Jesus. I will never, not never, no never bow my knees to worship another God. These lips will not honor another God. These knees will not bow to another God. These knees will only bow to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior, the Redeemer of this earth. So for me, if he is not born again, listen, we ain't got no talk about. The second thing on my list was tithing. And tithing was important because I wanted to see what you're doing with your money. I wanted to see if we have things in common. Some people believe in tithing. Some people don't. Some people tithing is under the law. Some people believe it's not under the law. I do not believe tithing is under the law. The Bible doesn't teach that. Some people think you shouldn't tithe. I believe we should tithe. Tithing is a personal decision. So I wanted a man who believed in tithing. So what if you've been with your boyfriend and he don't believe in tithing? What you going to do? You're going to force him to tithe? Y'all going to fight every Sunday to give to the church? Y'all going to fight to give to the Lord? Or do you just walk away? Or you just going to accept that he don't believe in tithing? You're going to sneak the money down to the church to give to the pastor. What you going to do? The next thing on my list for me was a man was a, that was a gentleman. I love a gentleman type of man. I love you to open the door for me, send me flowers, um, treat me. I love for a man that's going to pay, you know, you go on, take me out. You should pay for me. Okay. Don't be looking at me. Talk about I need to pay. So what if you meet a man or your boyfriend you've been with forever? He is not a gentleman. He doesn't open doors. He doesn't believe in pain. He believes in you, you, you know, we split the, the, the meal 50-50. What you going to do? You going to stay with him? You going to force him to become what you want? Or you going to accept him? And then 12 years later, you're in the wife group crying about your, he don't buy you flowers for your birthday and he don't give you nothing for Christmas. Yet you buy for his birthday and you buy for Christmas. So who's the fool? You are. The next thing on my list is a man who was a provider, right? Had a great job to be able to provide for me. So for those of you who's been with your boyfriend since high school and college, what if he doesn't have a, a great job? What if you want to provide a husband and he believes and thinks that y'all should split the bills 50-50? Huh? What you going to do? You going to walk away or are you going to force him to be the provider husband? Or are you going to accept him and pay the 50-50? Now me, Janice, you know, I'm not about to marry you, wash for you, cook for you, have your babies, do freaky stuff with you, have you climbing the, la the wall calling Jesus, swinging on the chandelier, walking around in sexy teddies all day long and pay half my mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna do it. <laughs> I just not gonna do it. Okay. <laughs> I just not gonna do it. I might as well stay by myself. Okay. 
So what if your boyfriend do not believe in being the provider? What are you going to do? So this is why, this is why my book, 23 Tests of Guys, You Mind Me. Listen, if you don't have this book, this book is a powerhouse. I talk about everything up here, how to date, how to speak, how to dress, everything. What if your boyfriend that you've been with for 10 years does not have those same foundational values that you have? What are you going to do? Are you going to force him to become like you or... Are you going to walk away? Which is why I don't do boyfriends and girlfriends. Because the natural next step for boyfriends and girlfriends is to get engaged. But what if he's not it? What you gonna do? What are you gonna do? So ladies that's dating for marriage, I don't want you to feel like because all these couples are getting divorced and there's no hope for you. No, if you've been over here any length of time, I give you three months. If you have been listening to my content for at least three months and you've picked up 23 types of guys, right? You've read Not How to Not Give Boyfriends Husband Benefits. You've read The Naked Wife. You've read 10 Years a Girlfriend. You are currently reading Take the Cookie Off the Table. You have no reason to choose the wrong husband unless you are allowing your kitty to make the decision for you. In my new book coming out very soon that I need to send to my editor, I talked about how there must be mutual interest, right? Because growing up in the church, the church made you think your man needs, he has to be ugly. It doesn't matter what's on the outside. It just matters what's on the inside. That's a lie. Because I love a good looking man. I love a handsome man. So are you telling me I need to choose an ugly man? And they always made it sound like the men that could provide, the men with the good jobs, the tall, good looking men, they were all devils. They wasn't gonna love you right, they're not gonna treat you right, they're gonna abuse you and cheat on you. So my thing was, well, wait a minute. So there's only ugly, broke, busted people in the kingdom. There's nobody in the kingdom that's good looking, have a good job, that's gonna love you and treat you right. And I remember saying this, I said, Lord, there must at least be one saved Black man on Wall Street, right age category, that's looking for a wife. That's my husband. Guess where my husband worked when we met? Mm -hmm. So when you're choosing a mate, there's a lot of factors that go into it. I don't believe in making a man. I don't believe in helping him to become <clears throat> what I want him to be. You understand? If I like nice teeth, if I like a man with nice teeth, I'm not going to date that. Because you're not taking care of your teeth. So if you're not taking care of your health, what else are you not taking care of? And if you're not taking care of your teeth, are you going to take care of me? If you don't want to spend money to fix your mouth, if you're walking around smelling funky and dirty, and you're grown behind man, do I need to stay on top of you to keep your hygiene? So when I met a man when I was dating, I looked at him and I gathered a whole lot. I look at his hair. I look at his fingernails. I look at his teeth. I see if I can smell his breath. If I smell a stinky breath, I look at his shoes. Are they clean? Granted, I live in the Northeast, depending on the weather. If it's snowing outside, I know your shoes is going to be messy. I listen to how he speak. I listen to how he talk about his mom. That's something my dad told me. I listen to how he spoke about his father. I listen to how he talk about his pastor and the church and the things of God. Because all of those things are things things, data, you need to make an informed decision. 
So if the man you're in love with, or that's your boyfriend, he does not have the same foundational values that you have, why are you wasting your time waiting for him to change? This is why I do not believe in boyfriends. Because you meet a man, you make him your boyfriend, and then you figure it out. No, no, no. Figure it out first. Because see, a lot of young couples that get married, once they get in their 30s, they're starting to figure things out. They're figuring out and they're figuring, well, I don't even like you. You're getting on my nerves. You're growing apart. You're not growing together. That's why I am not for young couples getting married. They need to wait. Ladies, go about, live your life, enjoy your life travel. Do you know how many young wives in these groups crying about, oh, I'm home alone with the kids. I didn't even get to enjoy my life. No, travel the world. See the world. You don't have to have those of you in the comments, what you're supposed to do for sex. The same thing you was doing before you get married. You discipline yourself. You don't have to sleep around. And if you're only getting married only to have sex, what, what happens when you stop having sex? Because there's a lot of Christian couples that are not having sex. There are lots of ce celibate wives. You get married because you're burning. And what happened after about two or three months after the sex is gone? You know what my daddy told me? You're going to spend a little, very tiny, tiny, tiny amount of time having sex. But you're going to spend time being a couple. Living your lives, blending your lives together, those foundational values. So guess what? Me and my husband, we never have a fight about where, if we go to church. The only discussion we had when we was going before COVID was what service you want to go to? 7 o'clock, 11.30. He, or sometimes he would go to the 7 o'clock service, come home and work, and then me and the kids would go later. But now... I found a smaller church where they have everything the kids need. He would go to his pastor uh, to see his pastor, which is also his frat brother, seven o'clock. Then he would come back, pick us up, and then we would go to the other church so the kids could have Sunday school and Bible studies and breakfast. Because my little boy, he said, Mommy, where is the, I need to go to the church. They give me breakfast at the church. I need to go back there. Okay. We never have a fight about that. We've never had an argument about giving to the church. Never. Not one time. We've been married eight years, nine years this month, this year. Not one time. Not one time. Even throughout COVID, every month my husband go up there and pay our tithes and offering. And when Pastor asks for a little extra, honey, pass one a little extra. Let's give him two, three hundred dollars extra. Christmas, Thanksgiving for Christmas, Thanksgiving basket. Toys for the kids. Honey, I'm going over here. I'm going to go spend about two or $300 getting some toys for the kids. Okay. Never. Him being a gentleman, no problem. My gas got car. My car got gas in it. Everything. Bills paid for five, four. Come to these bills. I don't worry about it. It's paid. So the reason you want to marry someone who your foundational values are the same is to avoid uh fights and arguments in your marriage too many couples spend time arguing and fighting about stuff they should have figured out before they got married because in the naked wives when i was in and i know my video is a little long this morning but i gotta get through this this morning when i was interviewing the woman you know what i asked them i was like so why did you get married why did you get married because the things you're fighting about when you are married, were things you were fighting about before you got married. So why did you marry him, ma'am? Why? So the reason you want to have as much similarities as possible is so that you can grow together. And you can, you can avoid fights and arguments in your marriage about those things. Mike and I don't fight about going to church because we're, we both love Jesus. We don't fight about tithing and giving to the church because we are both tithers. We love both to give to the Lord. 
I, we don't, I don't fight with him about being a gentleman. That's who he is. I don't fight with him about being a provider or, or him asking me for, 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 for could you imagine girl? I would be, I would go, Ooh, child. <laughs> I will, dad, he's asking me for half the mortgage. That's not who I married. Never. He ain't never come talk about, I'm short. He ain't never short. <laughs> I didn't marry a man that's going to be short. And all the other things we don't fight about. So because you don't fight about because your foundational values are the same, you can grow stronger and every day your marriage is sweeter and sweeter and sweeter. Your marriage is to be enjoyed, not endured. Our ancestors endured slavery. Your marriage is not to be endured. Your marriage is to be enjoyed, but you cannot enjoy your marriage if you're going in different directions. He's pulling you north and you pulling south. This is why I want you ladies that, are, and for the women that's married, the wives that are married, you need to go see a, a, a marriage counselor. But for the ladies that's dating for marriage, please be sure to pick this book up. You have a, an opportunity to change, to change your future because the husband you choose will determine the rest of your life. The rest of your life. You don't want to be fighting in your marriage. So the girls that ladies that are dating for marriage, the way you avoid divorce is before the marriage. Okay. When you're married and you ask him, how do I avoid it? It's kind of too late because he might not have been the one y'all might not have been supposed to be together. And I am not a part of the church mentality where thing once he's saved, that's it. That's just a part of it. That's just one slice. What about the other 95%? So ladies, that's dating for marriage. You don't need to be fearful of all these divorces. They could not have done it right. They were college sweethearts, high school sweethearts. So they think they're supposed to get married. And some of that time you need to walk away because that person is not right for you. Not because you've been with your boyfriend for five years, mean you're supposed to get married. This is why I don't do boyfriends over here at Janice Hilton. Because it gets you in this web where you think you're supposed to get married when he might not be right for you because your foundational values are not the same. And when you marry somebody that your foundational values are the same or as much similarities as possible, you're not fighting about nothing. I cannot tell you the truth. The, the, the last time Mike and I had a fight because we don't have anything to fight about. I think now maybe our biggest discussion is around, around the baby. He want to do something he don't want to do. He does. But other than that, we're not fighting. <laughs> we're not arguing. We don't have nothing to fight about. Because our foundational values are the same. Do you understand what I mean? So don't fear because you see all these couples are getting divorced. Uh, Megan, she was in an abusive marriage. She saw the good guy. She said, oh, I want to marry somebody like that. Next thing she know, God told her to me, that's your husband. Well, but anyways, I have to go. I love you. Show me love. Those of you who's been asking, my Patreon is linked below if you want to support me in a monthly basis. I know I got a couple of emails. Janice, I have all your books. I enjoy your your, your teachings. How else can I support you? My Patreon uh, and, and sign up for the different levels. My books are on Amazon. Help me spread the words, okay? Uh, get these books and give them out to people. My t-shirts are on Etsy. My uh, t-shirt that I was wearing yesterday, Made to Be Adored, is linked below, beloved. Wisdom Journal. I love the book of Wis uh, Proverbs. That's one of my, that is my second favorite book, book of Proverbs. And of course, my newest book, Take the Cookie Off the Table. For those of you who want to ask, well, it's not good. Like, like, like by me telling young people not to get married is me telling them to fornicate. No, discipline yourself. The same thing the Apostle Paul told Timothy. Discipline yourself. Especially if you're saved and you're in the church. I got to go, girl. I love you. 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 See you later. Bye. Oh, be sure to check out Janice, my allegedly Janice, allegedly Janice. Okay, love you. Bye.